everyone, it's Ashley and welcome to my unread Canadian TBR pile video question mark. Basically here are all of the books that I own by Canadian authors or Canadian illustrators that I have not read. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to be co-hosting a readathon called the Read A Thon. I think it's cute and clever. I will leave the announcement video linked down below, but basically from July 1st to July 8th, myself and a couple of co-hosts that I'm really excited about will be reading Canadian books by Canadian authors and Canadian illustrators to try to promote Canadian literature and just reading more Canadian. The main reason I'm doing this video is to give you guys an idea of like some Canadian books you might not know about, some Canadian books that I really, really liked so I bought and I really want to talk to you guys about. I will leave Goodreads links for every single book I talk about in this video in the description box down below. If you don't use Goodreads that's totally fine but Goodreads will give you a full synopsis of the book so that you can get more of a gist of it but I don't want to describe every single one because the video would be like an hour long. Okay first I'm going to start with graphic novels because from what I can tell I have read quite a few Canadian authors in graphics but I only have a couple that I haven't read. I just recently bought this because the Read Athon has a challenge where you're supposed to read a book by a Canadian Aboriginal author and I actually I actually can't believe this is true, but it was. I did not own a book by a Canadian Aboriginal author. So I went to the bookstore on like a hunt for a book that met this criteria and somebody recommended this one and it looks really good and I'm really excited about it. It follows a young Aboriginal man who decides that he like doesn't really like who he is and he wants to like go through some healing processes. That's all I really know about it. It gets really, really good reviews. It's like won a couple of awards, it's been nominated for other ones. So I'm excited about it and I'll be sure to let you guys know how I feel about this one. Also as a like spoiler alert for my Read Athon TBR video, this is definitely going to be in that. Next we have This One Summer by Jillian and Mariko Tamaki. I don't really know anything about this. It takes place over the course of a summer. You can kind of catch that from the front cover. Um, I don't know anything else about it. I know it gets really, really good reviews. Somebody at my local comic book shop recommended this to me not too long ago. And I really like the concept because it's all done like in ink so there's no color and I rarely read graphics like this so it'll be very very different for me so I'm excited about that and also it's a Canadian author so and also a Canadian female author which meets another criteria so exciting. Next we have The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. This follows a group of kids at a summer camp and they get lost on an island during that summer camp and then it follows like what happens to them as adults based on what happened at that summer camp. That's like the basic gist I can give to you of this. It again gets really good reviews. I picked it up because I loved the cover and then I read the synopsis and I was hooked. It's also very very short so that's exciting as well. I have not read it obviously because I haven't read any of these books so can't really give you a personal review or recommendation in any way. Book! Next we have Bellevue Square by Michael Redhill. I don't know much about this. I know it follows a girl in Toronto who is like thinks she might be losing her mind but also she has a doppelganger and it kind of like screws with her brain the whole book and also I picked this up because a friend of mine told me that they read it and then when they finished it they were like what is real? Is this real? Am I real? Is the world real? What's happening? And I feel like I generally like books that leave me feeling like that. Next I have The Dark and Other Love Stories by Deborah Willis. This is a short story collection that is supposed to have like surrealist magical vibes to it. It is a bunch of short stories about like love and how love affects people and what it does to people and how it can affect the world and it just like is all very very like weird and creepy and different. So like for example one of the one of the short stories they tease at in the inside of the book is that this woman who's in a relationship, she has a husband, she lives in a house, she just sees this giant hole in her house and her husband doesn't see it, isn't affected by it, but it's like tearing her apart. And it just like sounds so intriguing to me and like different and I really really like that. Next we have a book that's been on my shelves for a very long time. Like I remember hauling this book when I first became a booktuber and that is My Friends, All My Friends Are Superheroes by Andrew Kaufman. Uh, this follows a young man who just got married and all of his friends are superheroes. He even married a superhero but at their wedding this person like hypnotized his wife to believe that he was invisible and now he like can't get her to see him but also she thinks that he abandoned her. And also there's, I'm sure it's going to be like hilarious as well because of the superpowers and things like that. And also it is so short. So that as well, very exciting. And I don't 
know many people who have read this so if you have read it make sure to comment and let me know and I also haven't really read any reviews on this because it's like an older book as well so Next, we have Death at Peony House by Krista Walsh. Krista Walsh is a local Ottawa author. I have met her many times. She used to, like, come in for author signings at the bookstore I used to work at all the time. Uh, she is lovely. I picked this up because she's lovely, and I really love her as a person. But it is also a, like, kind of almost urban fantasy-esque book. Uh, it follows a young girl who is a sorceress and a journalist, and she goes to this place to find a headline and instead finds a dead body that connects to, like, this 150-year-old cold case. And then there's, like, craziness ensues obviously there's a love interest thing this is a giant series there's tons of books in it and again Krista writes really fast and I really really like her as a person so I'm very very excited about this I will leave the link down below for Krista's book and every other book um but I'm really a fan of like trying to read locally so that's exciting also I feel like this is signed yeah it's, it's signed so cute I really like her highly recommend you check it out Next we have The Midnight Queen by Sylvia Izzo Hunter. I don't know anything about this other than it is a fantasy book that takes place in a school. And normally a fantasy book that takes place in a school is like my jam and right up my alley. So again, I don't really know anything about it except for that, but I feel like that's enough to know that I definitely want to try to read it. It is also a series. I think the second one's out, but not the third one, but don't quote me on that because I could be wrong. Next we have Nobodies by Chris Gilmore. This is another like local author that I picked up because he came into my bookstore to do a signing. He's I think from Ottawa but now lives in Toronto? Question mark? Uh, and this is a short story collection. That's all I know about it. I can't tell you anything else. Sorry, sometimes that's gonna happen in this video. I just don't know too too much about the book but I will leave a link in case you want to check out more. Next, we have a Canadian classic that I have never read, and that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I actually haven't read any of Margaret Atwood's, like, full novels. I've only read, like, short things. Um, I just feel like this would destroy my soul, which is the main reason I haven't read it. And also, it's, like, like Canadian lit literature, and, like, I'm not sure how I feel about that genre yet, personally. Um, but for those of you who don't know, this is kind of like a dystopian-esque book where women are treated like shit. That's basically what I know about this, and I don't really know if I want to know more about it. So I'm indecisive about this one, but I will leave the link down below. Also, like, you can just watch a trailer for the TV show, which will make you realize that it literally is a book where girls are treated like shit. On a completely opposite side of the spectrum, this is another Canadian classic that I haven't read, but very different, and that is Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. I have always wanted to read this. I used to watch the show. I feel like I would connect to the main character really well. Like, I feel like we'd have a lot in common. I just never got around to reading it when I was a kid, and then I just haven't, like, found time for it as an adult. But I really, really want to. So this is like high on my list of priorities to try to read. So yes. Oh, also for those of you who don't know, it follows a like young, super spunky, sassy girl who lives in PEI. Next, I have 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl by Mona Awed. I got this a couple summers ago. I've been eyeing it forever. I don't know why I haven't gotten to it. I feel like I don't actually need to describe this too, too much for you guys because the title is actually very good at describing the book. Uh, but I'm really excited about it. And again, it's a very small book, so it won't take too, too long to read. And I've also heard from people that it's a very fast paced read as well. Next, we have a book that I've been wanting to get to for a very long time, and that is The Imperfectionists by Tom Rochman. This book follows a like group of English speaking journalists in Rome, and it follows their newsroom and like there's tons of stuff going on in the world as well but it really follows like their personal entanglements and things that are going on with them personally while also incorporating the news and I just feel like somebody who went to school for journalism and, and who has always wanted to be a journalist I just feel like I will really appreciate this so I'm very excited about it I don't know why I haven't gotten to it yet in my life but I really really want to get to it soon so I'm very excited about this one Next, we have another book by Tom Rochman. This one is The Italian Teacher. This cover is like the most beautiful cover I've seen in so long. Uh, it follows a young man whose father was like this prestigious artist, this prestigious person, and basically he has never been able to like fulfill those shoes, and his dad passes away, and then he takes this opportunity to 
like try to be more like his dad was in a sense um and he is an italian teacher this son that's all i know the cover is really what hooked me <laughs> Next, we have Weave a Circle Round by Carrie Marin. This book reminds me a lot of A Wrinkle in Time. It has like that wrinkle in time feel. It also from the back sounded a lot like Coraline. So that's why I picked it up. I will again leave links down below in case you want to know more about it. But yeah, it gave me a like Coraline wrinkle in time type feel. But it is like an adult fantasy slash YA fantasy, not a middle grade. Next, we have Fishbowl by Bradley Somer. This book is about a fish who's on like a high floor of a complex and basically it jumps out of its bowl out the window and it's a story told from the perspective of the fish about what the fish sees on its way down. And I just, I just, yeah. I don't think I need to explain why that sounds so interesting to me because I feel like it probably also sounds really interesting to you. All right, only two more left, guys. The first one is The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. I have not read anything by Heather O'Neill. She's like one of those Canadian authors that gets praise all the time. This one follows two orphans in Montreal who have very different abilities. They're both very strong in certain ways and they have like certain things that make them special. And to my knowledge, they decide to start a circus. And that just sounds so intriguing to me. And also my best friend Katie has read this and loved it and said that I would love it and that I absolutely have to read it. So I picked it up like right away. And last but not least, I have Here So Far Away by Hadley Dyer. I met Hadley Dyer at the HGC Frenzy event in Toronto like last month. Yes, last month, maybe two months ago. Um, and I really, really liked her. She was so articulate and wonderful. And she's like a great human being. And I am so excited to start reading this. I waited to read this once we decided on the challenges for the read a -thon because one of them is to read a book from a province you haven't been to. And this meets that criteria because it takes place in the East Coast, which I haven't been to yet, but I'm going to on July 8th, which is when the readathon ends. So I'm super excited about this. This is also a spoiler for my read a -thon TBR video because this is definitely also going to be in it. Okay, so this is my Canadian unread TBR shelf for you guys. I wish that I had more books in this pile, but I'm actually proud that I had this many. I didn't think I would have this many when I was deciding to film this video in the first place. But if you have any recommendations for Canadian authors, Canadian graphic novels, whether it be writers, illustrators, colorists, it doesn't matter. Make sure to comment down below and let me know so that I can check them out because I want to make this stack a little bit bigger in the future. I hope you guys are joining me in the read a -thon that starts like tomorrow. Um, and other than that, I will see you guys soon with another video. Happy reading. Bye!